Okay. Yep. Welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded to the cloud. It will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel by someone in our IT department within the next couple of days. I just want to let everyone know that we have three attendees in the attendee room. And at this time, I will turn things over to Jonathan and to Margaret. And, and, and we do not have a quorum. Yeah, and we, no, we do not even oh. uh, do not have not a even quorum. Not close. Yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're getting there right. slowly. <laughs> what do we need? Seven or eight? Seven Seven is my understanding. Yes. Okay. We got three. Yep. <laughs> so, Margaret, if you need to change the host for this meeting, you just hover over a person's name, and then little dots appear, and then oh, you can nice. change who the host okay. is. Great. I know, um, good to know Simone sure. will not be here. Yeah, Simone um, is on the She's vacation. away. Kathy, I didn't think would be here, but she yep. showed up at the finance committee meeting. Uh, oh. so, so maybe she'll make an <laughs> appearance here. Um, and then Paul is also, I don't think going to be here because he's away. This will be interesting. <laughs> so it could be a very quick meeting. if uh, It could indeed if we don't get to a quorum. Is, is Denis or um, Denisco? I expect them. Uh, yes. Okay. I mean, I, we we knew we were going to be closer on this one uh, because of the time. There are other okay. folks that, that can't make it. Um, I'll, I'll give uh, Mike a call and see if he was planning on coming. I'm going to text Tim Cooper. Okay, we've got Phoebe. That's good. So up to four. Two, Hi. Yep, three, four. Sorry. So well, we Vivian. have, we're just wrapping up. Oh, there's Mike. We had a, a short meeting prior to this. So. Oh, okay. Good. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're scraping towards a quorum here. So I think we need two more. Let's see how many people I can actually see at once here. Oh, we might be getting there. Oop, we might be, <laughs> might, we might be, might be making it. <laughs> Margaret, my trick is I can't see everyone all at the same time. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try to count here and hopefully start officially start this once we get to seven. One. I meant to tell you, I went to the Patriot Station. Six. I think we're six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if anyone sees yeah, a seventh, let me know. Yeah, yeah. we got, we need one more. We got one coming in hot in a second here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Phoebe, can you text Alicia and see if she's able to join? Yep. I don't have a number for her. Because we do have several people who are away, so we need everybody who's in Amherst to show up today. <laughs> for as long as they can, because that'll be our meeting. Do that be though that's better. Now I can see everybody. Did not magically make us a quorum though. Ben, is it Rupert that, that you saw go by, by chance? Yeah, good. Give him a few minutes to light up his computer. So for folks in the public who might just be joining us, we're, we're waiting a few minutes until we have a quorum. Alicia said she's coming. Great. Oh, Great. There's Sean, I mean, Ann Rupert. So I think we're at a quorum. I'm going to count one more time. One, two, three. 
three. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so I'm going to formally start the meeting, and uh, Alicia may join us uh, a minute or two once this begins. Um, good afternoon. It is, let's see, October the 21st. Um, this is the Amherst School Building Committee meeting. Uh, I am Jonathan Salvan, uh, standing in for our usual chair, um, Kathy, who's, who I believe is still moving uh, back <laughs> uh, from, from Switzerland, where she was during our last meeting. Um, and I am now going to pass it over to Margaret, who will walk through our agenda um, for today. And uh, there you go, Margaret. Hey, team. All right, I'm going to pull this up. Can everybody see that? I can see it. Great. Okay. Um, so in some ways, the agenda is very brief, um, although the content may be more expansive. So the main um, item today is Denisco is going to continue presentation and development that is ongoing for the building <clears throat> massing, window designs, everything. Um, we will talk briefly about the agenda for the next meeting, which is on the 4th and is going to focus on the uh, site design. And um, I'm going to give an update. We've got a couple of invoices we need to look at today in short. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and turn it over to the Denisco team. And, and Margaret, I just realized I didn't do uh, oh, the things I was supposed to, to do, which I everybody. have to make sure that everybody could, is and seen and be heard. And Jonathan, all that. real quick, um, Alicia is in the audience. She just needs to be brought over. Okay. Ah, uh, now how do we do that? If you click on the attendees, there should be a few little dots next to her name. You just click those and it'll say change to panelist. You know, I don't, uh, Margaret, you, you, you may, might have to do that since you were made the, the host. Yeah, Margo, you're going to have to do it. Yeah, because they, so, they're called Sean, participants I've... on my screen. So just click on attendees, and then next to Alicia, there should be little dots that you can click that, and then click them, and there should be a change to panelist or promote to panelist um, option. I see participants. So, um, so click on participants. Do you see Alicia's name? Let me see. I don't. Do you want to just click on my name and make me co-host and I can do it? There you go. Okay. There we are. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you all. And so I'm, I'm now going to make sure that everybody can uh, hear and be heard. Um, and I'm just going to do it as I can see people on the screen. And for that, me, that starts with Mike. Present. Ben. Present. Tamara. Here. Phoebe. Here. Rupert. I'm here too. Sean. Here. And Alicia. Here. Okay, now Margaret, we, we can hand it off to uh, Denisco. <laughs> All right, Tim, Donna, Vivian. Let's see, Rick, take it away. Yeah, we're gonna let Tim be the star of the show. I don't know that I wanna be the star, but I have the screen and I will share it. He's a good driver. <laughs> Well, he's also got more screens than he did last time, so. <laughs> true. This is true. Uh, although I have just encountered a, that the host has disabled screen sharing, so I don't know that I can. If you allow me, I will. Sean, can you fix that? Because I made you host. Let's see if it works now, Tim. I am still not able. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't either. See what happens when Kathy goes away? Yep, exactly. <laughs> she runs a tight ship. Give me one second. 
Um, can you try it now? Now I can. Perfect. All right. Can you see that site plan? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so we're going to talk about some incremental changes that uh, we are making as we really define the boundaries of the site um, through meetings that have, you know, designed the site circulation uh, meetings with Aaron Jock and our wetland specialists that have uh, changed our understanding of what our setbacks are at the southern end of the site, um, and then further considering the amount of space that we have to allow on the site for outdoor play, outdoor learning, uh, and other community needs of the site. So here is where the site plan was last week. Uh, what we are looking at doing now is adding, moving the building a bit to the south to allow for all of the program that we want to the north. Um, introducing a slight bend into the center of the building, 10 degrees, that will maintain the solar orientation of the classrooms. Uh, it will allow the entrance of the building to face the main drop off, loop a little bit better, and it will create a little more space between the existing building and the new building for phasing, construction, separation, and it will also ensure that we can build all of the play areas and outdoor learning areas within the first phase so that um, in the fall of 26, when the building is occupied, it will be fully operational. And as they are demolishing the existing building, um, the play structures, the outdoor learning, that will all already be online rather than part of um, a phase two or the fall of 26. Tim, can I ask you just to, to, to redo that back and forth? That would that happen really quick with sure. the slides. I just want to. See, so okay. yep. yep, at the scale of the site, uh, 30 feet uh, doesn't look like a lot on this drawing, uh, uh, granted, uh, but that is a lot of flexibility in terms of a playground phasing, yep. getting stuff. So that is the before and after. This is the general location that you've been looking at for the past several iterations, and here we are moving to the south. There's still a comfortable distance between the drop-off loop at the closest point where there is no parking or service, you're 15 feet away where you have parking or people exiting vehicles or walking into the building. Uh, there's more than enough room for all of those activities to happen. Um, we are continuing to study, but we've actually adjusted the program so that the service area wall is back further from the gym. So even with moving the building south, there's more separation between the service area and the drop off loop. Phoebe. What's that right outside the cafeteria now? Uh, right outside the cafeteria, that is uh, an indication of where we will have some seating. That's not a proposed layout in terms of table. It's just an area that is identified. So, um, and then um, what exactly that seating will be, whether it's picnic yeah. tables, benches along the planting or something. Uh, it, it's just a, a hatch to represent an area. So I think, um, as as we were saying, we're still refining the exterior. So mm, yeah, let's let, we'll just no, keep go going. Side. No, no, no. I'm just saying November fourth is where we really want to get into that. So you're going to see some minor changes that might not even appear or be meaningful to you all right now. Um, so we, I think, the point of showing the site plan was just to show that we were able to really move the the building down, which really helps us. Uh, real, real quick, Donna, before we go, just to, uh, to touch a bit on that that next meeting, and I know we'll talk about this a little bit before, but just for folks that are, that are watching in the public, while that is the main focus of that meeting, that does not mean that, that we're going to be planning to tie up everything in a neat, tidy bow with the site. No, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is just plenty to of show time to kind of continue to design correct yeah yeah absolutely like th there's a lot of moving parts and we want to make sure that whatever we show we can actually do um as everyone knows there's between stormwater grading um other kinds of requirements geothermal fields I mean, geothermal maybe. fields that were well fields anyway so yes Yes, thank you, Jonathan. 
Um, all right, then moving indoors, I mean, as Donna said, that was sort of uh, context for the plans as we are showing them to you now. So other than you know that 10 degree bend in the middle of the building, all of the program adjacencies are essentially the same as they were before. Um, this is shown with the stair to the north as it's been and the exit to the bus drop off loop to the south. Um, but we are studying flipping those. Uh, a stair is a space that can absorb some interesting geometry, perhaps better than a room. Uh, as you see, the stair here is in a triangular space. Um, the point being that it, it might make more sense for the stair to be where the kids come in from the bus and go straight for their classroom and then have a first floor exit to the playground. And then as we go upstairs, you can see that the program might sack a little bit better there. But uh, the, the adjacency of the cafeteria, the gym, the administration suite has been tweaked a little within its own walls, but all everything else in the plan is as you have seen. It. Um, then moving up in the building uh, with the change in geometry, uh, the only room really affected on the second floor is OTPT. And then on the third floor, that geometry uh, affects the mechanical room, which is a series of pumps and compressors, and, and that doesn't really affect anything. We are studying, but we haven't got to that point yet, flipping the stair from the north to the south side and putting the teacher and staff dining where the stair is. Uh, so it's located in the same place on each floor. It would get north light, uh, and then a stair would be directly adjacent to where Students come in on the first floor from the buses and can go right to their classrooms. So oh, those... Phoebe's got a question. Oh, Phoebe, sorry. So second floor, you said OTPT would be um, obviously having a stair on this side of the building. Um, would that just flip over to the other side then? How would that? Um, what we're looking at is taking the teacher workroom and staff dining, which was one space, essentially putting it where the stairs and OTPT would move a little bit to the west where that space is now. I mean, there are a lot of things that we have to study, uh, but uh, just to, to you know fully outline what the possible adjacency changes are, and we think they're pretty minimal and it will uh, sort of improve the layout of the building and the site. This is what we're studying. Other questions? Rupert? Rupert. Uh, if you can go back to the first floor, that'd be great. Sure. Um, uh, in the back of my mind, I've been thinking that it, uh, depending on how busy things are in the custodial area and the kitchen area, that the, um, the uh, person entrance uh, might end up having to carry some of the load of deliveries to and from the kitchen. And I'm wondering if a stairwell on that side would um, make that less um, visible. Uh, just, just to make sure I understand your comment, you're suggesting that some of deliveries would be coming through this door, if you can see my cursor, and going over to the kitchen rather than straight through receiving. Possibly, yes. Uh, just because uh, of how busy and the timing of, of how all these deliveries and uh, the custodial work and how likely the custodial area is to be filled up with tools and supplies and whatnot. Um, to making it a, a sort of difficult pathway to the kitchen. Um, I mean, I, I think we would make our best effort to design this uh, service area in such a way that you weren't and have to be redirected. Um, you know, it's a pair of it's six foot doors. Uh, obviously, if the space is cluttered, that uh, affects your ability to go through it. But there is the possibility to make those door widers do a different type of door. We cannot control the space being cluttered, but we can give you the space you need, um, you know, so that every every operation, every traffic flow is going where it most wants to be. I mean, there's, you know, this door, even if there is a stair here, will be double doors. It will be wide enough for a hand truck or, or something like that to get through. But I mean, there are, you know, good reasons why you would want all deliveries to come here, as I'm sure you 
would prefer and know. Um, Thank you. Other questions on the floor plans? If there are no other questions on the floor plan, we were going to share uh, some updates to the videos that we reviewed at the design subcommittee last week. Great. Hey, Jonathan. Yep. I That's just, Margaret. I don't know if you saw Angelica has joined the meeting. Ah, yes. Angela, can you, can you hear us and make sure we can hear you? Yes. Great. Thank you. So this only has minor changes uh, since the last uh, building committee and some tweaks uh, that we showed at the design subcommittee last week. The massing is still largely the same. The fenestration patterns are um, similar this doesn't have the uh, 10 degree uh, this does not have the 10 degree um we're working on that and uh, i apologize that we we can't bring all the materials up at the same speed it's uh but uh certainly at next week's meeting which i don't know if it's scheduled actually uh we will certainly have that So Tim, why don't you talk about not, not much has changed, right? Um, you want to just talk through the material, what we're thinking? No, nope, not much has changed. It's still um, essentially a, an overall palette of two masonry, um, the iron spot, which we have seen, um, and a lighter, possibly porcelainosa or ground face CMU. Uh, still the accents with a bright, masonry or some other panel next to the windows. Here we have the sun shades on the southern exposure. Mike, you have your hand up. Yeah, but you can finish going around. I mean, I'll remember my question. I, it's a question, I know we'll focus more on it next time on exterior materials, but uh, why don't we get the full tour and then I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, and so here we are at the bus entrance on the south of the building and with those plan changes, uh, this will open up a bit more. And if we put the stair here, it's likely that this will be glassier. Uh, it will speak a little bit more to entrance, um, and not something while you're slipping by uh, the service area. And then also with the plan changes, the service area wall is moved back further from the corner of the gym, which will allow us to probably uh, build more substantial site walls or, or maybe even fence it off entirely and still allow it to comfortably function. Uh, so that the experience of driving by it every morning and coming to the building is 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 improved. Here we are coming around to the front. So those are. The tweaks on the exterior, which granted are minor, uh, but they are building up to um, some, I don't want to say major changes, but uh, refinements that uh, pick up some of the options that we've been talking about. One, the canopy uh, is still a sort of uh, the placeholder, if you will, uh, but we've heard your thoughts on color and marking entrance. Um, Obviously, there will be some changes to the elevation related to the plan changes and then just continued development on uh, all aspects of the building. Tim, do you mind if I jump in with no. uh, a couple thoughts? Please go ahead. Yeah, so um, thank you for, for this work and, you know, really feels like it's coming together in some really nice ways. So I had two thoughts on the exterior materials. One is that Maybe it's my eye, but this looks more like red brick than the iron spot that we've mm -hmm. seen. Um, is that just something that next time around we can see some of the differences of how it looks? Because I, you know, we've seen the iron spot, and those who've been in person, you've been able to see it. It's in my office for anyone who who wants to see it, but it doesn't really seem like it's showing yet on this model. Am I misreading that or misunderstanding that, or is that accurate? 
I would say more than a misreading, it's a failure of the of the rendering. Uh, renderings, you know, you try to balance the light so that it doesn't look dark, and, and you know, unless you spend an extraordinary amount of time, it's never going to be look like a photograph. But the short answer is yes. This that is really what, answers my question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the second one was not so much on the aesthetics, which I think we spent a lot of time for good reason on, but actually the durability. So I just wondered whether it's iron spot or the porcelain or other materials, CMU, um, in terms of durability, right? I mean, I was showing the materials to someone um, this week and they were like, uh, I really like to try to destroy it, not because they didn't like it, but just to like, see how is it going to last over time and so i said no you can't destroy it no it was rhetorical in nature but um but i just wonder you know durability is there a difference between some of these materials you know um because you know new england you know takes a beating on its building as its cars just the weather patterns and you know we can think about what this will look like now but what's this going to look like in 20 years you know how a date is going to be and you know, if a, if a, a square or a rectangle does get damaged, what, you know, what is the kind of, uh, how are we able to repair, like those types mm -hmm. of very practical real matters, you know, have not been where my focus is, but this conversation this week really shifted my thinking a little bit to that. I don't know if you're able to, and if this is for two weeks from now, you could forget it for today and, and, nope. and leave it, but just definitely on my mind after the conversation I had. Well, we can certainly touch on it, but um, if you're looking at a sample of an exterior material for a school, the correct thing to do is actually try to destroy it because we are um, we are not going to propose any materials that are not lifetime of the building materials. Your brick, your ground face CMU, they'll be there forever. There are materials like phenolic resin panels, perhaps a composite metal panel that are certainly durable for the life of the building, but we might not use them next to a door at ground level or anywhere that a snowblower could bump into it or something like that. Uh, the best, we have that in mind with every material we select, and it, it is a true and real concern. Are there any relative differences? I know that you're saying, uh, sorry, to, it's okay, Jonathan, to ask a follow-up. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, is there any relative differences between those materials? I, I, I totally get that you're only bringing materials that would, and thank you, like, <laughs> we'd rather not look at materials that look beautiful or inexpensive <laughs> in 10 years from now will be, like, crumbling. Like, that'd be bad, right? Mm -hmm. We could make a bad decision. But are there relative differences of note, or really, it's it's just you know. Um, so, the, you know, uh, so the differences that you might be able to pick out. So masonry stone materials are all going to be light, fast. Uh, there will be no fading. They will look the same as they do the day you install them forever. Uh, there are perhaps some panels that will. I don't want to say discolor, but change over time, particularly phenolic resin, depending on what's on it, but not to the extent. But we also make sure that we specify the ones that are the most UV stable. Um, and then, you know, as I said, some of the panel materials are not, I don't want to say they're not durable, but they are not durable as masonry. So for those are the reasons that we don't put them anywhere where they could be hit by something. Right. So like, but the difference between iron spot and red brick and yellow brick. Oh, you know, there's yeah. No, much... sorry. Right, those are all roughly those similar. Are, yeah, brick is essentially brick is essentially brick is essentially brick. The one, the one area where you might get into a difference in durability of a masonry like that is a it's called a clay coat, um, which smells a little bit, but we have not and probably will not suggest anything like that. Thank you, I appreciate it, Tim. We also just to add to that, we also select materials that can be cleaned. So in in the off chance not likely to happen, right? If there's graffiti or whatever, these materials can be cleaned. Um, and that goes to the same uh, with the porcelain. So the porcelain is pretty easily clean. It may be, it, it probably is less durable than the solid masonry wall, but um, the, the system is very easily replaced, right? So you can actually replace the panels pretty easily. They design it in such a way that um, you don't need to replace loss of it, you just replace a panel at a time. So because of that, we typically don't bring the, the porcelain, the rain screen all the way down to the ground. We'll put something a little bit more durable, like a solid masonry material. Do other folks have uh, questions or comments on the exterior? Phoebe. Sorry, my question is about the interior. So let's finish oh, okay. with the exterior and then I have another. 
Okay, if, if other folks don't, I have a quick question um, and I realize it's not gonna be fully answered, um, uh, but uh, Tim, you were talking a little bit about how you're gonna push that wall of the service area or the service rooms back a little bit uh, to gain a little bit more area for the almost like a, a surface courtyard or a service yard with screening. Is that is that where the dumpsters are going? I this is a real prosaic questions, but you know, the pro, uh, the uh, dumpsters are kind of very um, forward <laughs> in the current school and be nice if they had a, a more discreet home. That currently is where the dumpsters are going. It's close to the um, service exit where the trash will be coming out and it uh, works with the geometry of the loop for a front loading truck. And um, you know, part of the reason for pushing it back is to, is to hide the dumpsters to the extent possible in that location. I mean, the, the, other, offers, the other alternative is to move it pretty far away, which is a, a burden on Rupert. Great, thank you. And, and, and just touch on that. Um, we haven't really fully developed that area, so I don't. I don't want anyone to think that like we're just going to put a screen wall and walk away from that. So once we get the geometry, if we're move, if we're tweaking it a little bit, moving the stair, well, certainly there'll be a whole study on how we can best treat that area to make it as nice as possible while recognizing the activities that occur. Rupert, go ahead. Uh, just a quick question. I'm, I assume that if that wall gets pushed back, there's some other compensation, so there's not a net reduction in area for that space. That is true. So with the change to geometry in the plan, the, the distance between the gym and where the classroom starts is going to get wider. So that space will get sh wider, but shallower with the same amount of area. Questions for the exterior or shall we move on? I think we can move on, we can always come back. Right, well, let me go to the inside, one second. Um, walking through the front door. Uh, the doors are all propped open, which they would never be as a uh, concern, but uh, at, at the drop off, but this allows you to see what's going on. Um, this shows two transaction windows in the vestibule, which is uh, the product of a discussion we had with Sasha and Mike. Uh, we are looking at also combining them into one larger window, but this is uh, the window where once you've been buzzed in from the outside, your credentials will be checked. Uh, it'll be make sure that you're supposed to be in the building and then you'll be buzzed through the second set of doors. And once you get through those doors, there is the um, desk to the administration office, uh, Tammy's office beyond, the other uh, nurse, uh, and then a uh, security screen that could be pulled in front of the desk for office hour, off hour functions that would allow the office to be secure. Moving past the main office, Tammy's office, um, there's the lobby itself with some benches and seating. And then we're looking through the glass to the cafeteria and the stage and as we and up here, you can see the corridor that leads to the music practice rooms um, and the stage, which will also be usable as a practice room with storage for the considerable instruments that are part of the program. As we started to allude to the last time, the idea is that the large public spaces off of the corridor will be transparent to the extent that they can be to allow light into the lobby and allow a visual connection to what's going on. Um, we have to study what the opportunities are for signage, for display screens. Next to the gym is the stair going up. 
Um, and then this is, uh, you know, starting to articulate what the cafeteria could be with the stage, a space that you look through to see the playground to the north, uh, outdoor seating. Here's another view of the ramp. Uh, you know, this is just one of the ideas that we're putting forward as an area for art within the building. Uh, but there is also areas for putting student work and things on the walls. Uh, another look at the vestibule from the inside. Uh, colorful materials um, that would be durable. Um, this is a wood panel that's shown. It might also be uh, a veneer panel on a resin. Uh, sound absorbing panels throughout. And then uh, possibly bringing the exterior materials to create a connection inside of the vestibule. Did we show what you have a question about, Phoebe? Um, actually, it was um, about the first floor ceiling height. I'm just wondering whatever happened with that, because I know we had some there. We had gotten some concerns about mm -hmm. um, it being, uh, you know, a few feet higher than the other floors. And I know there was some we needed it for the cafeteria. And I was just wondering what happened with that. Uh, so we are um, looking at um, and maybe in a bit we can go back to the plan, but we are looking at it rather than having the first floor be 17 feet or 17 floor as we had it, uh, ESR everywhere, we could reduce that and then the media center, the library is basically aligned with the cafeteria below. So if we were to bring the second floor down to uh, call it 16, 14, 14 for the building, um, you would have to take a short ramp or a couple steps up to the library, um, but that would have uh, you know some practical uh, benefits in terms of, of, of cost and, and operating costs for heating uh, that we just wanna make sure that we can do that structurally and, and, and get all of the clearances for the ramps and everything to work, but it, it is something that we are certainly looking at. Thank you. Other questions on the interior? Rupert. Um, right. I can see from this particular image, it looks like portions of the office couldn't really be secured when the public is in the building after hours. It looks like it's wide open. So this jam of this opening um, is a pocket for a retractable um, gate, for lack of a better word. It's a folding panel door. Uh, so it would come and, and what this is not shown because we're so early, there would be a track in the ceiling, there would be a track in the floor, uh, and it would be a locked metal gate that would prevent access. Yeah, we often put these in, um, we build these into our schools so that when the school is closed, but the community is using the other spaces, um, these panels are actually glass panels, so you can still see through them. I mean, they can have different levels of translucency, but it still provides kind of a still a friendly feel. So it's not a roll down grate or gate, but it's it kind of integrates with all of the glass that's already in the lobby. Rupert? Uh, uh, hopefully uh, you can tell us stories about um, uh, sliding panel walls that are more successful than my experiences in the past. <laughs> Um, granted, uh, we, we, we have had, um, or we know that operable partitions are, or can be, if not properly designed, or particularly if you have a building that likes to move, uh, can be a problem, but uh, uh, we are aware of those issues, and we will give you one that is uh, up to your standards in terms of moving. I will say just to, to add my own comment, um, I, I really like the openness of it during the day. Um, it, it really uh, makes, I think, for a very welcoming office opposed to a wall or, um, you know, additional doors you have to 
uh, navigate um, to actually talk to a human being once you've been buzzed all the way through. Yeah, and um, we've done this successfully as well at other schools, and th they operate fine when when they do need to secure it. Um, but again, right, we, we want to be as welcoming and opening and not not feel confined. So but we can certainly, as we get into it a little bit more, um, have those detailed conversations with you. Other questions and, and, and comments? I can, I can, if there aren't any, I can pass on some of what I remember, at least from, from the design committee. Um, uh, the, the folks who had seen it last week really liked the, the sense of, of the liveliness of the color and the, and the light. Um, you know, even though a lot of what we're seeing right now is just sort of stand in uh, for, for the eventual materials that, well, that will get chosen. Um, I think there was a generally uh, well-liked kind of warmth to this space. Yeah, to add to that, Jonathan, we talked about bringing in um, natural materials, right? So the wood in itself creates a warmth to it. We looked at um, different kinds of wood. We're probably leaning towards a lighter colored wood like maple. Uh, potentially with some deeper colors for accents, and that really um, lends for a lightness within the school. When you walk in, you really just kind of feel that this is light and happy and joyful and um, just beautiful with the colors. And we are just um, starting to look at colors. So as we get further along in the design, we will bring a few couple of different color palettes for you all to to look at similar to what we're doing outside. We want to bring some of those colors inside. So that really is a whole, a whole building and um, the inside relates well then to the outside. Yeah, I think there was a lot of kind of appreciation for the the level of transparency uh, that you're showing here. Yeah, it's really great to be able to stand in the lobby and be able to see beyond the space and, and to be able to see the playground and the fields beyond. Um, I think that's the goal is to bring in not just the natural light, but to provide those views out. Right, it's all about providing a really healthy um, uh, an environment that really lends to um, healthy learning for the kids. And Vivian, it, it, if in, in this view, we would see that outdoor seating area, is that correct? Yeah, we yeah, have a review. good amount of glass there. The doors are that go out are to the left or vestibule, but um, you should be able to see right through there. The grade is very close uh, to what the finish elevation of the floors are, uh, just on the outside there. And we will look at um, what the optimum height of the windowsills are in that area. Again, you know, we're just starting to look at the amount of glass, um, the amount of light, and controlling it. And this, of course, is a north side facing glass, so it really is kind of nice because we don't need to worry about glare and direct sunlight. And, and the I only, think, yeah, I, I just want to add, we are developing the, the outdoor dining and mm -hmm. we are trying to do it and, and we'll be bringing it before you as well as kind of considerations when we look at the full outdoor solution um, as it relates to the outdoor learning play areas because um, it could take up a lot of space and so we just we just we just want to be careful that it it the outdoor play area doesn't just become an extension of the cafeteria so but yes um, we understand that's an important component and we'll probably have a little work session as it relates to the outdoor learning
PB. Can you remind me what the size of the cafeteria is? And then to follow up that, I'm going to ask you, Mike, uh, or whoever, actually, Rupert, you may know, um, what is that in relation to, uh, you know, how is that look in relation to the size of our existing cafeterias? Uh, the cafeteria is 3,700 square feet. I can answer that. It would take me a second to find the existing, which is considerably smaller. And this I'm is trying to look it up. And we're basing this on three seatings or two seatings? It's based on three seatings. Three seat, I was just going to say it's three seatings. Yep. And I think the difference between this and for those familiar with Wildwood or Fort Rivers cafeterias, those are like, well, they don't exist really right now. They're classrooms. But when they used yep. to be cafeterias, they were sort of classroom-ish sized rooms that were subdivided with temporary dividers. Um, and only one of which had like kind of authentic you know many windows to the outside so you know there's size which is an important question but it's also where it is in the building and how it's set up those don't have didn't have high ceilings so crocker farms is more analogous to this both in terms of the cafeterium but also in terms of and function that it would serve so so if if <laughs> this is accurate oh uh, you know mike this might be based on what you were currently using because we were in the middle of COVID, it was showing 1,200 square feet for it's, Fort River. And right, Wildwood. so it's it's that times three. And Wildwood has two, it was showing, right? So um, if you've divided it by three, it would be three times that, right? Okay. And I mean, we've, also, we've also figured, I, I think, how many um, students, if everyone sat, it, it's gonna, you know, our goal is to be able to accommodate full full school assembly with kids sitting on, on their butts on the floor. Okay, thank you. I, I was I like, can I just clarify something? So I, I'm trying to get this right in the note. So it sounds like the pre-COVID cafeteria was 3,600, three times 1,200, is that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. And now we, or this one will be 37. Correct. Phoebe, did you have a follow-up question? I, I, I'm, I was trying to figure out in terms of, because this is gonna be, you know, these are gonna be the areas also that our community uses for, you know, parents night and whatever else we go to because you know we gotta go <laughs> um and so i was just trying to figure out um with parents and kids and all of that what you know how does that compare to and of course i'm i'm very familiar with crocker not as much the other schools so i was just trying to figure out how it would all compare in terms of having all of those bodies in a place trying to you know do whatever we do in those spaces so do you feel like you got the answer to that just want to make sure yeah i yes thank you yep. other thoughts questions comments Tim, do you have uh, any other views you want to show us or? Those are the views that we have prepared. I mean, uh, we are sort of head down design mode, to get stuff done. Uh, uh, the changes are iterative and in the next couple of meetings, we'll have a considerable amount to show. Well, the video is a huge help in visualizing this. So thank you for the level of effort that went into this. Yeah, so I think um, we're honing in on some details right now, uh, circling back with folks as it relates to some program functions within spaces that may or may not impact the overall design. For example, talking about the vestibule, we're talking about making sure we have adequate seats for the staff and the admin. And I think the 
principal's office, the location of that now is is appropriate and where it wants to be. So I think we're good there. But there's going to be little silly conversations that we want to make sure that we have, I shouldn't say silly, but little. For example, how many lockers do we need to provide for every classroom or every, you know, for every classroom? Because that will impact trying to hone in on some of the items that may impact space and or cost. And um, we do have a new code coming up and we are trying to understand how that's going to impact the project. So as we're trying to get ready for our cost estimate, we'll be having that conversation, preliminary conversation with our design team to understand what those implications are and how they may affect the project. So uh, to Rupert, we started talking about the size of the generator, location of the generator, but before we go and finalize that conversation, we wanna understand if there's impact to the size of the generator based on the anticipated new code. So throw that into the mix and uh, we're, we're just trying to get everything ready for the cost estimate. But it's exciting and we're really excited. And obviously there's some still some details to work out like the first floor height, how do we maximize the height and the spaces that really we would love to see that height without putting height where it's un unnecessary and things like that. So I think that's probably gonna be more the focus um, going forward over the next few weeks, we are submitting our cost estimate December 5th. Is that accurate, Tim? It's, it's that week we are sending it to our estimator. So with Thanksgiving in there and whatever, um, we're running. Okay. So we should, I think, then talk about upcoming meetings. So the next committee meeting, November 4th, two weeks from now, is going to focus on the site design. And as it's noted in the agenda, outdoor areas, on-site traffic, playground, school, outdoor learning fields. Um, we have not made a plan to have a design site visit a week from today when the alternate Fridays that we have been meeting. Um, and really, I think we have been doing this at because Danisco was asking as they kind of really charged forward with the design to be able to get some input in between meetings. So Danisco team, do you want to have a site design site visit next Friday? Can we get back to you on that? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Thanks. I know, well, I know you need to post it. Yeah, like we do need I, to I post it, so that. we'd have to get to it fairly soon. Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, it may be more important to, to pick a time, and I can just put a placeholder in everybody's calendar, and then you can let me know, let us know at the beginning of the week, and we'll notify everybody. I wasn't able to come to the last one because I was out of town, but um, 10, when have we been doing it? 10 o'clock start-ish? Uh, it depends. It depends. Yeah. yeah, they varied by week. Okay. Well, could you get back to me by Monday just so yes. I can put it in people's yeah. calendars? Yeah, uh, we just have a lot, a lot to do. I know um, you do. <laughs> and I don't think that we'll have anything um, anything more for in-person show and tell. So I think it would be, our time would be much better spent. Um, making progress. Making, yeah. thank you. It's it's to benefit your process and to give you more feedback. So Phoebe has yeah. a hand up. So I was just wondering, um, because so part of the, the site conversation, uh, there was a lot of, uh, sort of community question and input from you know rec and all of that kind of stuff i'm wondering if that if that input is going to be part of our conversation 
at the next meeting, like if we're going to have people, um, if it's going to be this format or if we're going to have people um, ask their questions, give advice, that kind of stuff. Um, and if that wasn't the plan, does it make sense to have people have input at a site visit next week as opposed to that meeting? You know what I'm, I don't know uh, if I'm saying well what I'm trying to, <laughs> what I'm trying to ask, but. Um. Well, if I were to rephrase, Phoebe, I think the question is we've, the design team has heard from a lot of people either in, in meetings that have occurred to date with folks in the city like Ray Harp, and we've had written recommendations and suggestions from members of the public. And there has been quite a bit of input from the school. So I think if I were to rephrase that question, I would say, given all of that input, does the design team feel like they need additional input? in order to move ahead with developing the design proposal. Because people can submit, you know, written testimony at any time. Um, and, and I think every, we would welcome that. So this won't be the, the last site discussion yeah. iteration. I, I, I'm a thousand percent sure, um, I, again, we're making like really great progress and able to capture more site than we thought, but there's no way that we'll have everything resolved next week. So, so our suggestion would be let us present. Um, people can of course provide feedback as they have throughout the entire process and we welcome it. It's been helpful. Um, and then maybe we, we can go from there. I think we're going to, I don't believe we're going to have the design, the site design laid out far enough in advance to have a conversation with Park and Rec to have any meaningful input. So we're going to have to do all of that after we have the opportunity to present next week. Um, or, or at the fourth, which is not. not oh, next oh week. the fourth. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So the, the um, fourth, if I'm hearing it correctly, the fourth is it's more it's more like a, a, a status update. Um, in a meeting where it's where we're dedicated to talking about the site a little less about the building um, but it's again not it's not a final conversation um, it's it's more of a in-depth this is where we've this is what we've heard this is as far as we've gotten we know there's more yep thank you thank you Jonathan if, if we have time um, to reach out to Park and Rec and, and others prior to that. I will certainly do that because that's helpful in the process so where everyone knows or, or is hearing what we're hearing. We may have to focus a little bit more on the outdoor learning and activities for the school prior to that to make sure that we are allocating sufficient space to meet their requirements, which is, is really important. So. Let's just, if we leave it that, uh, unless we're able to expedite it faster than we can, that we'll just present on November 4th, look for input after that. And again, um, this will be an iterative process. Rupert? Uh, this is just a simple question. I'm not sure if I missed something when I was away on vacation. Are we expecting to hear more from CARE about the changes in the on-site, off-site traffic stuff, and do you think that'll be in two weeks? Uh, we have been informed that the town is going to handle the off-site discussion. And that, I was going to say exactly that. Um, so I'm not sure where the town is in, in all of that, Rupert. I don't believe that they wanted to or plan to engage PAR for the offsite improvements. Um, we have shared with them our current onsite and just getting some input. I think we have a little bit more refinement before we make sure all the radius work, they're gonna check all the radiuses and do all of that. But um, if you were talking more to the offsite, that would be a conversation to be had with the town side. Thank you.
I'm looking for other hands. Seeing no other hands. Okay, so um, it's 2.31 and I want to spend just a couple minutes. We have a couple of invoices to look at and I wanted to give the committee a brief update on sort of contracts in general. This will not take long, um, but we will need to take a vote at the end. I would suggest that we do take one, you take one vote to approve all three invoices. So there's one invoice from Denisco and two invoices from Answer Advisory. Um, but first, let me kind of give you an update um, on where we stand with the current costs of the feasibility process. So um, this is a document which has been sort of simplified. <laughs> There's, there's quite a bit of bookkeeping behind all of this stuff, but I thought this might be a good, simple way to explain where things stand. So um, just to walk through it quickly. So the town has appropriated in total a little over a million dollars for this part of the process. And it was, it was appropriated in two different pieces, but for the purposes of our discussion today, that's the total. The base contracts that were established last fall, um, so this is, the OPM is obviously us, so our original fee, which was anticipating a project that was, you know, basically going to a vote in November, that was uh, about $196,000. And then the base contract for Denisco was 500,000. Now, two things have happened since then. And Denisco was kind of very forthright um, at the time the base fee was negotiated, which was that because depending on the choice of site and depending on some of the decisions that were made in the early months of the contract of the project, uh, like deciding to go with geothermal, there are a whole bunch of consultant pieces of work that were not included in the base. So, our contract has expanded a little bit because the timeline is now longer. So instead of it ending in November 2nd or whatever it is, it's gonna end um, when the vote happens in the spring. And then Denisco has this whole crew of folks, many of whom you've met in meetings. Um, OTO is doing the site work, pair the traffic engineering, uh, Berkshire Group has, you haven't seen, but they've been involved with surveying the site to confirm the wetlands boundaries, the geothermal work, et cetera. So it sort of goes on from there. Um, there is, so all of that together um, has brought um, the total, I actually didn't put the total in, but there, there's, there's still money in this pot. Um, of appropriation, although at this point we're not anticipating additional fees. So when you are looking at the invoices, I just want you all to know that the invoices are being tracked against these signed contracts at this point. So um, just to toggle to the invoices. So this is Denisco's invoice, which was for um, September. And um, you can see here, let's see, the request for this period is here, 33333. And then I think this kind of summarizes the rest of um, th that. This is this whole list of all these folks who are working on this project, right? So when you look at this, it's gotten longer now because there are, um, uh, there's this big crew of consultants who are doing additional services. So actually the, the total invoice when you include all of that is just a little bit under $40,000. And behind it, there's quite a bit of backup that explains all the pieces. So I'm just gonna scroll through this quickly. This is the base contract for Denisco and they um, get a kind of small uh, markup on each of the consultants, which is really to um, <laughs> partially compensate them for managing all these people who are doing work on the team's behalf. And each invoice ends with um, a workforce participation document that the MSBA requires. So our invoices are simpler because there's really not as many people. So this is our invoice for August time. 
uh, about $8,300. And then ours have this sort of different kind of billing, which is just uh, mostly me with a little help from a couple of others um, tracking our hourly billing. And then this is our invoice for September services. Uh, which is for 10571 It includes a small amount of billing for Shelly Patorf, who's our um, net zero consultant. And again, there's the same kind of hourly billing of hourly, recording of hourly time. I think this is Shelly's invoice at the end. So, so that is what is out there to approve so jonathan i'll turn it back to you sure. um does anyone have any before we move to a vote does anyone have any questions on uh the uh the items presented and if not i will uh, entertain a motion to uh approve them for payments I make a motion that we approve all three invoices as presented. Second. And Sean seconds. And I will now do a roll call vote. And I'm going to do it in the order of folks I can see. And so, Rupert, you're first. Aye. Rupert, aye. Ben? Ben, also aye. Tammy? Yes. Mike? Aye. And Phoebe? Yes. Sean? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Angelica? Yes. And I am also a yes. So it's unanimous with three absent. Yes. OK. So that is really the content for today's meeting. We have but I just want to comment, but yes. Oh, yes, public comment. I just want to say um, how great it is to have Alicia back. So thanks uh, for working with us to figure out a time that you could participate. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. So Mar public Margaret, comment. I made you host again because my internet was unstable. So um, you'll okay. have to bring people in, or if you want to make me host again, I can bring them in. Let me see if I can. Figure out how to do this. So I'm going to go to attendees and I'm going to bring in Bruce Coldham first. Hello, Bruce. Can you hear us? Or can you? Hear yes, us? I can hear you. Um, um, thank you all again. Um, I just want to re reiterate, uh, firstly, uh, what I said to the design team and those present last week at the design subcommittee meeting that I just think that the progress is excellent and very, very reassuring and positive. And it makes me feel uh, pleased to be a part of uh, this town and this process to the extent that I am. I think it's coming along really nicely. Um, I think a uh, comment on the uh, proposed 10% uh, crank in the building, the 10% uh, 10 degree, I should say, 10% <laughs> crank. That sounds like I'm way back in the budget conversation. Um, I think in addition to the uh, benefits that Tim uh, mentioned, um, there's, a, there's, pr there's probably going to be an aesthetic enhancement that we won't realize, well, actually, we might realize when the model is adjusted, but when it is, a 10% crank is a really subtle thing, you think it doesn't amount to much, but in three dimensions, as you move around this building, it's really going to enrich, I think, the formal aspects of this project. It's also going to enrich the ex outdoor space opportunities because when you have the small crank, it's not now just a straight exterior wall, it's a cranked exterior wall. And I think we'll all be surprised, or Denisco probably won't be, but, but uh, how, um, how it enriches the opportunities. Uh, then quickly, um, shifting the stair across the building. Uh, again, the uh, model allowed us to see or imagine how that might be with the uh, glass 
uh, extending up above that entry for three for to the two stories above, saying, as Tim said, entry. I think that might be a really nice thing to do. Uh, so I'm, it, it, as far as I can imagine, that I, I uh, support that move. Um, and finally, what wasn't mentioned, Phoebe didn't mention it in the uh, interior fly through, but she did in the design committee meeting. And I thought it was a really interesting and, and valuable observation. So I'm going to repeat it on her behalf. She mentioned that the, she noticed that the floor uh, surface was plain. She probably understood that the modeling and so forth meant that that probably was a default situation, but she said that she liked it that way. And so did I, because the enrichment uh, of those spaces was by virtue of what was being done to the floor, the walls and the ceilings, and also with the daylight and the sunlight was coming through. So the, having the floor as a plain neutral plane uh, was actually rather nice and, 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 uh, and reassuring in some ways. And I mentioned at the time that uh, Michael, who I'm not sure whether Michael's still here or not, uh, that might give Michael's uh, aspirations for wayfinding uh, a real opportunity too. So if the floor is uncluttered by anything other than whatever might be wayfinding, I think it will be helpful for the wayfinding, but it also is, I think, uh, a good um, place. Uh, I, think, I think it will fit with the design as uh, it is uh, emerging. Again, thank you. I think this is great. I'm so pleased to be a, a, an observer of this whole process. Thank you, Bruce. All right, I'm going to bring Maria Kapikian and Tony is also here after Maria. Maria, Hi. oh, go ahead. That's interesting because I had not yet raised my hand, but I was going to, so this is fine. Oh, you know oh. what, Maria, I saw, I'm so new to this. I saw your name here and I did not realize you had not raised your and hand. You, so. you have correctly. the floor. <laughs> assumed correctly. Um, so, um, I, uh, this is a request to please post the slides from this meeting uh, ASAP um, so we can look at it and especially that, that 10 degree adjustment and uh, that shift down. And if you could please put um, on those designs the, the scale so that uh, it will be easier to figure out or possible to figure out what can fit in different spaces, that spaces that would be uh, very helpful. I have to admit, I, I am disappointed that there is not going to be a back and forth conversation, a dialogue about the outdoor space. I, I thought that's what we were going to have. Um, and uh, uh, in if that's not going to be the case, then my request is also that you post whatever is going to be presented on the 4th as soon as humanly possible so that... That will be on the 4th. So that we can that when we when the, we meet on the fourth. I think we just accidentally uh, muted uh, Maria there. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Sorry, Maria. Uh, I do I do not know what you have heard, but the point is, <laughs> um, for the fourth, could you please? Um, put whatever materials are going to be presented in thoughts as soon as possible so that um, we can think about it and react to it, not in the moment and be able to, to take, take the drawings and, and, and sit with them and, and think about them and be able to have as much valuable input as possible. Um, uh, can't do that when it's posted just a day or two before or, uh, or after the meeting. Um, Oh, I had something else and now it's gone. Alas. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. So I don't see any other hands up. So I think we are done. That, that, may, that may be it for today. Okay. Um, I don't believe there is any uh, things that were not anticipated before the last 48 hours. And so I will move us to adjournment. And uh, so we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody.